Portrait Artist of the Year participant Susie Lagarde has agreed to be interviewed by me, and I want you to know that the single painting that she did, well, she was on the program three times, but the one painting that she did is, for me, the my favorite image of the whole entire series. So we get a chance to speak with her, and I'm so excited. Let's get started. And if you would, please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe. This is such an opportunity to talk to people that I, who captivate me when I'm watching the program, and we get to find out more about them. So today I'm so lucky because Susie Lagarde, Lagar, did I say it correctly at all? You said it well, Lagarde. Yes, that's brilliant. All right. Well, she's decided, uh, has been willing to join us. Now, she was on the program three times. She was uh, on season five, episode one, season seven, episode two, and Landscape Artist of the Year 2023, the Blackpool episode. So she first came to my attention at the Blackpool episode, and I really want to talk to her about her experience on the program and, 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 and more importantly, what's happened since then in her career and the work that you will be able to go and see on her website, which is really exciting stuff. So thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me. It's exciting. <laughs> well, I see some of the work behind you, and I know that that's the most current work because on your website you have it very carefully um, collated so that you can see what what ha what you were doing in each particular year and then all your exhibitions as well so you are um, a very busy person and you know that, you know real real working artist real role, role model so can do you, would you be willing to talk a little bit about your experience on the program I'd love to should, should we go straight to the Blackpool episode is it the best yeah, let's start with the black pool. I have some personal feelings about the black pool, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that was almost unexpected or more unexpected to me to do the landscape artist than the portrait one. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think I'm, I'm still not used to paint landscape this much. Um, my practice is very much about painting from life, um, which can be anything. I, I love any subject. But anytime I've been um outside in nature uh, i quite find it overwhelming it's just so wonderful and beautiful and mm. nature does it well so i tend when left on my own i tend to zoom in to some detail and and find a figure or something to hold on to um that is not this huge open space so trying landscape um artists of the year was really fun because that kind of pushed me out of any comfort zone I can pretend having. Oh. Um, but yeah, it was really fun. I think it was a period of life where I was really keen to have that playful day of being given a set. Um, I really had enjoyed already in the past from portrait artists of the year, um, being with peers and having that kind of adre adrenaline packed day of painting all together. That's something that quite works for me. I like that silliness of having time pressure and just yeah. trying to be very present in the moment. So yeah, signed up for it um, without much practice on the landscape side. Mm -hmm. But I think that was best for me this way. I didn't have much expectation. I just mm. um, thought knew I would show up in the day, do my best to try to make it personal, to find something beyond just the landscape. Um, Blackpool is not a place I had been before, but um, the colors on that day were fantastic. Like we, we got quite lucky, even though the weather was changing a lot. Um, but the view on the sea, I mean, it was, it was, that was no way I could have resisted it. So really enjoyed it, but a lot of unexpectedness in that moment too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, in hearing you say that, I haven't um, recapped Landscape Painter of the Year yet. I'm going to, but you suddenly made me realize how different the two environments are because you don't have people walking around you and you don't have three different um, compartments of people working. So everybody, it must be a very, very different experience um, compared yeah. to indoor experience. 
Yeah, absolutely. The the outdoor sides of things, um, I was already more familiar with. Like it's something I love doing, just going outside mm -hmm. and paint. Wow. Um, I guess yeah, it was different. Also, in the fact that we are we were very much in line. Um, yeah. so almost from the layout, the setup of the pods, we could have all painted the same painting this time. Yes. Which, yeah. did not happen and that's what's wonderful right like, they ended up very different very personal um but i quite like that i guess the idea that on that show we are actually working with exactly the same subject and and yeah. weather yeah. movement and light movement so that felt really nice to have this very equal pace yeah that's the delight for me as a viewer is that i already know these people are going to be incredibly I don't want to say talented because I know there's a, a thing called talent, but what there really is is time on task, people who've devoted their life to, to uh, working on a skill and take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I know I'm, I'm in for a pretty delightful time. And then, of course, the variety is it makes me feel freer in my work to take risks, I guess. Yeah. So, so then... Um, so that was very different from your experience in the setting of Portrait Artist of the Year. But I saw that your training is as a portrait artist. Yes, that, that was what I was privileged to do for a couple of years. So very much like working with a model almost every day. Wow. Um, wow. Which, yeah, was fantastic. I feel very grateful. I had so much exposure to working from life. Yeah. Mostly in oil painting. I also got a chance to do some sculpture and some etching. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that was a very luxurious time of my life, um, which I'm still trying to emulate. But I, I really appreciate it now that it actually takes um, a lot of resources to try to replicate that um, yes. outside of school. So, yeah, I feel very yeah. grateful I had yeah. that time. And I think at, at the time, I just thought, if I'm training in portraiture, that would give me skills that would be easily transferable to any subject. But yeah. also I think I have this very, um, this love for human connection. And from life, I might be more of an introvert. So painting is such a good way to uh, like, just, just explore people, be able to stare at them and have this very generous exchange that's quite intimate even though we might not know each other yet so yeah portraiture helps me do all of that but ultimately that would be similar in a landscape i feel it's um all those skills or, or painting from observation is very much about paying attention to the moment the fleeting moment and trying to see things for the first time without um thinking too much without trying to know what we're doing, but just looking, mm -hmm. finding the shape, mm -hmm. the color. Well, I want to talk more about your, what I saw as connections in your work um, on your website. But before we go there, because I'm, I'm going to put a pin in it because I definitely want to go there. But I wanted to share with you that of all the paintings, and I'm currently watching episode um, season eight, I think mm -hmm. one more episode and then uh, in the United States, we don't get it after that yet. My point being the painting that you did of Geraldine Page. Geraldine is, James. Geraldine James. Thank you. Right. Okay. Was my favorite image in the whole series <laughs> ever. And, when, and I know she chose that painting to take mm -hmm. home. Right. Because she chose that painting, I thought, oh, I want that painting. I thought, what am I going to have to do to get that <laughs> painting? And then I realized it's gone. And yeah. that, I'm going to put a lot of images of that painting here because it is so extraordinary and so special. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, I won't probably won't say this word correctly, but ethereal. It was... Mm -hmm. She had a veil in front of her face, but all the information was there, but there was n nothing, nothing, um, you, you know, there was no eyelashes, no, none of those little things, but everything that was there was carefully chosen. And 
I, I can't get that painting out of my brain. But <laughs> did you feel like that was a special painting or was that just uh, work? I'm, I got to get the job done. That That is so sweet to hear that. Um, oh. it, it, I'm impressed by this painting because I was still very new to painting. Um, in that moment, I think it had been less than a year that I had this, this joy and excitement and also innocence. And I think that's in that painting, that was probably I had a, a quality of observation that is hard to replicate later on. Cause now I think I, I, I know more and sometimes it gets in the way. I think then I knew enough yeah. to try to very humbly look for that, um, that painterly game of trying to really look and not assume anything. So I think that um, veil quality is probably was probably translating of my inner state of being very humble and just trying, uh, but also the joy of seeing it appear. Like, I, yeah, that was such a a wonderful moment for me. And definitely that time, I think was the day where I realized, oh, this is what I'm good at. And this is what brings me joy. And even when it's hard in that kind of competition setting, I'm feeling well in it. Uh, it doesn't overwhelm me. So I, I took all of that as really good signs at the time. And I think that, yeah, I really committed to painting that day. Yeah, that, that it was as if the painting, although it was about her, I felt mm. all of that from the painting. I mm. thought if I have this painting in my home, I can walk past it every single day and I'm going to be feeling, you know, it, it, it transmuted for me what you were feeling as you described it, as you were painting it. I, I, when it did not win the episode, I, I had to go cry a little bit. I <laughs> just had to go cry a little um, bit because so I did. But, um, and now you, and you came back, when you came back, I thought, there she is. There she is. <laughs> I was so excited to see you again. And you painted Mirren Mack, who's a yeah. young, yeah, young actress, I believe. And I thought that one was fantastic too. And I just sat there and I thought, oh, who is this person? I need to find out everything about this person. I just, I love everything about the way you paint. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, so now I want to talk about a specific, about your, your painting, which is you are such an incredible colorist. When I look at your work, I don't see the use of titanium white in there. And, and yes, I do use it. <laughs> so yeah. you could talk about it, because one thing that I notice in the program, and I don't know that I'll put this in the, in the interview, maybe too, too technical for people, but... I notice a lot of people really leaning on titanium white in order to get the value shift that they want to get. And the result is when they're finished with the painting, I don't, I know they don't mean to do this, but the result is it becomes kind of looking pasty or chalky over yeah. time. Yeah. How do you manage titanium white so you, you're able to keep the, um, the brightness and the saturation of your color? Yeah. So I think, um, I, I love color, especially because I used to believe I could not see colors. I used to not trust my ability in that. Um, and so it's such a joy and a, almost a revenge to that like <laughs> poor self-belief I had. Um, something that really clicked for me. I was taught by um, a painter who lives in, in the UK in Kent, James Bland. Um, and he's an incredible colorist. So he really helped me shift um, just the way I look at the world. So almost before learning how to paint it, it was through playfully looking a bit more for colors. And something that really helped me was um, to change my language. So that was a pivotal moment where I decided to stop using the word white, gray, and black to name and describe anything. Yes. Um, and almost like playfully faking it at first, but trying to, to see the colors everywhere. So let's say if I'm painting a white room, mm -hmm. I would never think as I paint that there is any white there because that's not giving me much information. So yeah. I will use for that very light yellow and next to it, there might be a slightly darker green and some purples. And, and yeah, so using those words 
trying to be more specific and just more useful in the way I'm mm. using language has really helped and therefore it helps me on my palette pick different colors so yeah before I introduce any white I'll try to think uh, out of my colors what am I closer to so is it more of a yellow of a green yeah. of a purple yeah. Um, that really helps. So I'm still using white. And sometimes I do have this problem of keying everything to light. And, and I'm learning from that and trying to remember to, um, especially with oil paint, I think it's, it's, too, it, it's quite easy um, to, to get everything contaminated by white. So it's yes. kind of a conscious effort to not do that. Yes. Um, and usually when I paint, if it's helpful, like I'll try to, factors that in my process because i i know it will get muddy and i know white will get everywhere yeah so i start by painting my darkest or my most mm -hmm. saturated color also because i'm a bit lazy and i use only one brush so i i know <laughs> it will get everywhere so i'm trying to be just a bit smart about the order um mm -hmm. of, with which i paint everything mm -hmm. because i know this will happen Yes. And, and it's fine, but it's just trying to delay the moment where what ends up <laughs> delay the moment. Yeah, yeah. But the awareness of it is, it, it sounds like it's a, a constant in, in your mind. And, and I noticed that in your paintings. I thought, wow, not only is she not afraid of color, but you are an incredible designer as well. So now I want to talk about, you know, some of your current work that I saw on your website. And you know, I want people to go there looking at the description below so you can see what Susie's working on. I get such a feeling of incredible, well, there's a bunch of things. First of all, incredible design happening in these mm -hmm. things. I don't know what your graphic art training is, but it's like you, you um, and the other thing was I thought, um, I, I blurred my eyes, you know, really, really squint, 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 and yeah. looked at the images and I thought, these all work as abstracts as well. They mm -hmm. really don't have to be representative. And I thought that's a really good sign of a good designer. Mm -hmm. um, is that an innate, are you aware of that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, that's such a great compliment because I feel this is something I'm, um, I, I hope that my art contain, but I'm always trying not to be too intellectual about it. So mm. it feels even more perfect for it to happen through practice and just iteration. But yeah. I'm not trying to over plan things because I would just steal the joy of it. Yes. Um, but I think what's key in that, um, before painting, I trained, um, did not practice for long, but I trained as, a 3D modeler for video games. So someone will give me a 2D concept and the idea was to bring it into a 3D software and make it work, which I really enjoyed. Really, my brain was really happy with that. Um, and it's a world that is full of triangle. So even though ultimately we have the illusion of volumes and shape, mm -hmm. but the simplest form will be a triangle. And that made me happy. <laughs> And um, when when I when I'm painting that, if anything feels overwhelming or a bit too complex, mm -hmm. I know I can take it down to a triangle or or like a shape. That um, is so, and so yeah. Usually I do have that as almost a safety net. This is my easy way to break down the world into small things that align. That's so interesting to me because some of my favorite paintings. I call them, you, you know what origami is, right? The Japanese yes. folding of paper. Yeah. And sometimes when I'm looking at images or a painting that I really, really like, I pretend that I did not looking at the image. And I looked at the structure underneath, what I call the origami of it. And lots of times it's triangle, triangle, triangle. There's lots of triangles going on. And, um, you know, overlapping. So one of the things I want to talk about was... Um, your paintings of figures, and some of them are behind you. And I get a feeling, it's a strange feeling. It's not strange bad, it's strange good. Which is, mm -hmm. look at Edward Hopper's paintings. We all know that Edward Hopper, he's an American artist from the 30s or something. But anyway, um, of loneliness, right? 
And mm -hmm. oftentimes you have a single figurative thing happening around what you would call probably, well, negative space. In other words, or there might be two figures in the space, but I don't feel loneliness. I feel this incredible connection as if you're like the figures that you have. I feel like then I look at the objects surrounding them, which are not necessarily always discernible. I can't always tell you, you know exactly what the thing is, which doesn't matter. But they have the same equal importance to the subject. And I get the feeling like, no, there's nothing lonely going on here. She, the figure is interacting with the space and the, you know, the different volume of, of objects. I don't, I, I don't know if you're aware of that, that you have this duality thing going on. Mm -hmm. Spare and incredibly complex, calm and yet mm -hmm. incredibly descriptive. It's like, how do you, I think, how does a woman keep it in balance? <laughs> you do I don't know. <laughs> That's why I'm paying. <laughs> uh, but I love hearing it. It's fantastic. Because, yeah, those work are very personal because they come just from imagination <laughs> or they might have a starting point in observation. But, um, yeah, mostly uh, imagination, which I guess, as we know, is mostly memory. Um, but they... They happen through small scale doodles um, that I'll keep repeating and then I'll try when it feels right, taking them larger. Um, but usually I, I feel I don't know yet what mood they're in until I paint them. And eventually I'm like, oh, yeah, that's you. I'm, I'm, I'm meeting you. And from that moment, I try to not change it. I, I feel like oh, I don't want to direct it to a different mood. I want to respect what happened but make sure that there is love in the painting. I mean, it's very like, it's very therapeutic. It's very inner child. Um, but it is that thing of, I think the figures at first might be lonely. Maybe, maybe they're lonely, maybe they're sad, maybe they're moody or just bored. But what I love is that they're, they're using imagination and what's around them to daydream and to, to connect and to, find some peace or some playfulness. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's almost going back to this moment of childhood where because of being bored or maybe lonely, that's when actually you start engaging with mm -hmm. the world around you, mm -hmm. daydreaming and drifting away. Um, and I quite like when, I mean, painting is such a beautiful like, medium where suddenly we can play with 3D and 2D with yeah. um, subjects and the background or actually it's just a flat surface, so it's all the same. Um, so I really enjoy playing with that um, intertwined quality of uh, does this shape belong to the foreground or the background, to the character or the landscape? It doesn't really matter, it's just the one that's triangulating uh, everything. So yeah, those paintings make me happy and also usually they're a bit harder to create because there's still a lot of um, self doubt and and a lot of thoughts of oh that's not really serious what am I painting I don't even know what I'm painting and so allowing that um, feels even more important because mm -hmm. I'm trying to not be a good student who who is trying to replicate something I'm just yes. trying to let happen what happens yes. and that's yeah, that's a great I think thing that, I love doing. that's that's one of the real challenges when you reach a certain level where you you can replicate. And, and anyone on this program can replicate. And so mm -hmm. then it becomes, all right, what, what are you gonna do with the skill that you've now developed? What becomes kind of your signature style? And what I can tell you is I can look at one of your paintings and, and I know it's your painting. You have a very mm -hmm. unusual palette. That's not, I don't wanna say unusual because that makes it, you, for me, when someone has a real signature style will be something like, you know, you're, you're scrolling. Many of us scroll. That's how we get our information now. And like, all I have to do is be like that far into the scrolling, not even a quarter of an inch. And I go, oh, this is hers. I know it. Aww. I don't even have. Which, I mean, if I ever achieved that as an artist, I would like, 
the, you know, it's which was part of my heartbreak because mm. I, yeah, you know, hashtag Joe was always wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I thought judges, you have missed the boat on this woman. You have missed <laughs> the boat. The program really had, um, as I said, in me confirming with myself how much I love doing it and mm. how seriously I'm taking myself, even though it's with a lot of joy, but I was like, okay, that's, that's me being a professional or, or yes. on that path. Mm -hmm. And it really helped me with visibility and I sold work through it and I had commission. So on that note, perfect. That gave me financial means to keep doing it a bit further. Uh -huh. um, so for all of that, I'm really happy. And I still have people who I meet who might have seen it or their nan has seen it. So it's, it's really nice. Oh my gosh. Well, you are one of the most well-balanced human beings I've ever spoken with, <laughs> which is <laughs> not always oh, that's that's that. I haven't disclosed the full picture. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We, we all know we all have different facets, but yeah. you know, some people are really tortured by their work to a certain degree and to live with, um, you know, what I get from you is, is, that there's joy in it, there's continued learning, and that you don't see it as a means to an end. It is mm. your life. Yeah. Um, and boy, does that carry over in the work for me. Um, do it. Um, but trying to, yeah, trying to keep it as regular as possible because that's by doing it that it happens. This said, when it's hard, uh, it could be booking a live drawing session, something where I'm committing and I'm in the setup where other artists are doing it. And I'm reminded that, oh, yes, it's hard, but we, we're doing it together. Yeah, That really helped me. Or I guess sometimes it's also not painting, but just looking, mm -hmm. just mm. without having the pressure of putting any mark um, if it's too hard. But sometimes just looking, sitting down looking, but going in my head uh, with the game of, trying to find the colors, find the shape, blurring my vision, playing with that. So yeah, different thing that I've no, learned to That's place. what I do. I'll be, I'll yeah. be driving and I'll think, okay, how would you mix that color? What is that color? All right. What about that? It, I call it, um, a uh, color bingo. It's my own little private game. <laughs> exactly. It's brilliant. I, I, I absolutely love it. And I love that it's always available. Um, yeah, and, and it really doesn't matter as a subject. Like, yeah. life is so full of it. Um, I I almost had a silly realization or thought that life could be in black and white. We could have black and white vision. Mm. That would be fine. We would still be about able to go about and not hurt ourselves because the sense of, yeah. of touch would still be fine. Like we would still be alright. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, oh, colors. They must be just for the joy of it. Like and there's. Oh, not much function for it so yeah that makes me really appreciate this is the flavor of life this is the bonus part wow those are real gems that's what i find in, in these interviews is sometimes the real gems come up um after a little while but that is yeah. um, that rings so true to me you are definitely oh. preaching to the choir that out <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for doing this with me, and um, I'm so excited. I will edit it, um, and and so thank you again, Susie. So thank I'm you. Stop recording, but stay on. <laughs>